So in the last video, we have seen how to create a constructor and that to a primary constructor, right? And the way you can do that is by specifying a parameter here. I mean, you can specify a bracket and you can specify the parameter. So whatever you pass in the constructor while creating an object, you, that value goes here. But then if you remember in Java, we have a concept where if you call a constructor, we can actually perform some operations. The way what the, th the thing which we are doing here is just assigning the value, right? How about if you want to perform some operation, maybe if you want to print something, where do we write it? Let's say if, if I create a constructor human and then in that I want to print, hey, I'm uh, the human is created or human is born. How do we do that? So we have to write some block, right? And the way you can do that is by creating a init block. So we can write an init block. Oh, okay. So we can create an init block and you can print, or you can, you can perform whatever operation you want here. And you can say, you can say uh, human is, oh, what's that? Human is here, right? And we can also assign this. So what, whatever we are doing here, we can also assign that value inside the construct, inside the init block. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I forgot to, uh, I forgot to mention that outside. So it should be the variable need to be created outside, right? So we'll say keep it here and initially we'll keep it blank and later we can change the value, right? So here I can say name equal to N, right? Even this works. So this is how you can print some block. Now let's see how to create a, oh, we have not run this code, right? Let's run this. And if you run this code, you can see, we'll be getting the output as human is here because that's the init block. And you can, you can imagine as a constructor. So when you, when it calls the constructor, it will call the init block. And then after that, you're calling thing. That's why it's printing Kotlin is awesome. And you're also printing the name, right? That's great. But how do we create a secondary constructor for time being? Let's remove that. We don't need that anymore. Uh, let's assign n here. Now, why do we need a second constructor? Maybe I have a one more, I have one more variable here, which is age and age is of type int and the initial value of age is zero. But of course, right now, I don't want to have an age zero here. How do I assign a value to this, both the variables? I don't want to go for primary constructor. So you can also create a secondary constructor. You can say a constructor, you can use a keyword called as constructor and you can pass the number of parameters you want to pass. Maybe you want to pass two parameters in this case. So I will say I want to pass age colon int uh, comma and you can specify, uh, okay, what, what else we have? We have name colon string, right? So you can see we got this constructor and then we can open and close. We got a secondary constructor, but we are getting an error. Now it says primary constructor call expected. Now this is the rule, this is the rule in, uh, in, in Kotlin. Now what it says is whenever you create, whenever you call a constructor by passing some values, example, if I pass uh, 20 comma Naveen, and that's not my age here, but let's say we have 20 and Naveen here. And if you pass these values, so this 20 will be assigned to this age and Naveen will be assigned to this string, uh, which is name. The problem is Kotlin says, whenever you create an object, you have to make sure that you also call a primary constructor. I mean, even if you're calling any constructor of your, of your choice, Maybe in this class, we have 10 constructors with different parameters. You can call whatever you want, but you have to make sure that you also call a primary constructor. That's very, that's compulsory. Now, how do we do that? Okay. Now you can do that with uh, directly or indirectly from by using constructor chaining, but then just to keep it simple, what I will do is I will give a colon here. So after the constructor, give a colon and the way you can call a primary constructor or maybe any constructor in this class is using this. Again, the same thing is there in Java as well, right? We call, we can do constructor chaining with the help of this keyword. Okay. So in fact, I do have these videos on my, in my Java playlist. If you, if you have any questions, just go there and watch the video. In fact, in the entire series, wherever you find any problem, just you can watch my Java videos and it will, it will it, I mean, for sure it will clear your concepts. Okay. So we can use a, this, this keyword and then we can bracket. You can pass whatever you want to pass example. No, no, whatever, not whatever you have to pass only the string because primary constructor accepts only string. So we'll pass name, right? So you can see whatever we are getting from the, from this, from this constructor, you're passing that constructor here and then you're assigning that constructor in here, right? You assign that value in here. And then in this constructor, you can assign the value as a, so we can say age equal to age. Now that will be a confusion, right? Uh, so in, in Java, if you remember, we used to use this dot age. Let's see if that works here and you can see there's no error. It should work, right? And we'll print name colon. We will also print age now. So we'll print age and let's see if it is working or not. Let's run this code. And it says, okay, come. 
Uh, can you see that we got Naveen and colon 20? So now why we have used uh, this keyword here? Because we have age here, which is a local variable and this is a instance variable, right? So we can refer to the instance one with the help of this keyword. All right. And that's what I said, you know, if you know Java concepts, working on Kotlin is actually very easy. Right. So using this here just was, was my just guess because it works in Java. Should, it should work in Kotlin as well. Right. So yeah, that is that awesome. So you can create multiple constructors, do some experiment with this, create five to six constructors, call with different values. In fact, you can also do constructor chaining there. Uh, and that's it. Uh, that's that I hope you it, it helped in your const, uh, constructor concepts. Uh, anything else? In fact, we can also use constructors in inheritance uh, again, how to use that that we'll see in the next video. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to do inheritance and how to call how to do constructor calling that. So yeah, that's it. I hope you're enjoying this session. So do like and do share this video with your friends. Um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.